Hello everyone. Uh, this time around, I want to talk a little bit about virtual reality. Now, it's something that a lot of people really misunderstand, uh, partly due to the way it's portrayed in movies and television. Now, the notion of virtual reality is certainly valid. Uh, the idea that you have something that uh, feels fairly real, but isn't. It's uh, related to the notion of augmented reality, where you have something that, uh, say, superimposes other things on top of what you're already perceiving. Uh, that would be, th you know, potentially things like uh, Pokemon Go, uh, which uh, some of that, some, Pokemon actually, Pokemon Go, uh, would probably benefit uh, a little bit by a good, effective virtual reality uh, headset. That said, what we think of as virtual reality isn't really what most things uh, these days would actually be. And it isn't what everything will be in the future when we get this mythical, perfect uh, uh, virtual reality uh, interface operating. Uh, there's a lot of cases where some sort of a virtual reality with low fidelity, that is, uh, where you don't have photorealism, is still useful. Uh, it can be useful for navigating complicated uh, data relationships or um, operating equipment um, with a, you know, in three-dimensional space as, a, as sort of a remote control. Uh, it can be useful for seeing what's, uh, you know, a representation of an environment that's some distance away. It doesn't necessarily have to be photorealistic to be useful. And in fact, it's probably more useful in a lot of cases if it isn't. Uh, one of the reasons I say that is uh, you can easily trip on the uncanny valley. Now, the uncanny valley usually applies to, say, human uh, form. Uh, basically, uh, as the rendering of uh, a, a human being gets more and more realistic, it looks more and more realistic up to a point. Then it gets just close enough that it drops off to being totally disturbing, like worse than nothing, until it gets almost perfect and then it comes up and gets toward a perfect representation. Now, if you think about it, that makes perfect sense. Uh, seeing someone, so, someone that looks a little bit off of uh, normal generally indicates there's something wrong with them, so we have that negative reaction. But when you get far enough away, what we're seeing we don't perceive as actually human. Now, that will uh, impact things if we're trying to uh, represent an environment with people in it. So, as it stands right now, probably our best option is to have the people not look uh, photorealistic. Uh, simply because any minor glitch in rendering or uh, expressions, uh, things like that, would be enough to throw us. Like take a look at people with certain mental disorders that don't behave, you know, in a relatively typical manner, and they put us off. And that's that's because they're the the body language and so on that we would expect to see isn't there. Uh, so there's a lot of of uh, reason why we might want to avoid going to the total photorealism uh, end of things until we've really perfected it. But there's other things about uh, virtual reality that cause issues as well. And that is uh, typically in a case where what you're seeing doesn't mesh with what you're feeling from your uh, balance, uh, the rest of your, your the stuff that you use for balance. Uh, there's a word, I just can't remember what it is. Uh, or, you know, you get the feeling that you're... Uh, moving, you're, you're turning to the side, but you don't feel that motion. 
depending on the type of virtual reality you're experiencing. So if it's a sedentary interface, like you see in a lot of cases where you drop into the virtual world by putting on a headset and starting up a game or something, in a lot of cases, like with the technology we can do today, that's not going to work very well because uh, while we certainly will, can do a pretty decent job of rendering three-dimensional space stereoscopically, if we have appropriate gear to do it, uh, we can't simulate the feeling of motion that, you know, from, from the inner ear and, and things like that. And we don't, we can't really simulate the tactile feedback we would expect either from things like wind and so on. Now, a lot of that is probably less problematic than, than say, the Uncanny Valley would be, but it's still going to impact a non-trivial number of people. Consider the stereoscopic 3D movies that are all the rage. Even the ones that are done properly with proper three-dimensional uh, imaging, stereoscopic imaging it, at the camera level, or that are animated and rendered three-dimensionally, even those uh, tend to cause headaches for some number of people. And uh, as a result, uh, it's not as accessible as it could be. And then when you get down to the uh, process 3D, where they take the two-dimensional image and just move different bits of it forward and back in the stereoscopic view, so it's really two and a half dimensional, that's even worse because the depth cues you're expecting visually aren't proper. And with the stereoscopic 3D, you don't get the focal length depth, depth cues to go with the uh, parallax cues. And, and as a result of that, you don't get the, uh, the, the eyes doing their slight crossing for things coming closer and things like that. And, and that all impacts things. And that's the sort of thing we have to deal with to get a virtual reality set up to work properly. We have to get actual depth in the display. And that is not an easy problem. Uh, in fact, I don't know that we'll be able to solve it, although it's less of an issue for most people than, uh, than you might think. Uh, it, it just like it takes a little bit to get used to looking at a two-dimensional picture or movie and, and understand what you're seeing, uh, understand the, the impact of it. Uh, you know, people starting out with this 3D stuff when they're really young would probably have less of an issue with it than, say, someone like me who didn't really experience the, the stereoscopic 3D effect until I was uh, around 20. Uh, and, and that, uh, you know, that, that's an impact. So this is all going to impact virtual reality in the real world as we, we build it. But what we see in the movies is also a misrepresentation of, of it for another reason. Uh, we don't currently know of any way you can just put on a headset and get total immersion like they, they often portray. You know, some... Uh, some movies and television shows and so on make a, a point of uh, showing at least once or twice the uh, the actual fidelity of the rendering and uh, what the people are really experiencing. And then they go on to show us as if it's photorealistic and it's we're really there in the virtual environment with the people. And that is probably just simply an ex uh, a filmmaking expediency in that it's a lot easier to film something as if it's real than to add that digital effect to reduce the fidelity of the uh, rendering and adjust it to look like it would actually look. And also it's a lot easier to watch. And we already know that what we're watching is not real anyway. So those of us that understand that what we're seeing in the virtual world cannot be exactly like it would look in the real world, uh, at least with the technology uh, presented, well, that's perfectly reasonable. And there are a lot of conventions in cinema that... Uh, that fit into that uh, category. Uh, anything from that shing sound when someone draws a sword 
to uh, common camera tricks and, and things like that. And even the, the dwell on that important object that'll come back later so we notice it even though the characters don't. There's a lot of these things in uh, in cinema like that. So it's certainly understandable that you, you might use that kind of a shortcut. Uh, but when you get start coming along where someone puts a headset on, just a headset, just over their head, and suddenly they no longer feel their, their real body, they're actually entirely immersed in the virtual world. That's where things start to break down, because now you're, you're getting into the realm of magical technology, which uh, it probably won't ever exist. Uh, although, if we do have a breakthrough that makes that happen, that will have interesting implications. Uh, in that we'll have certainly some question about whether what we're seeing is actually real or not. Uh, even beyond the existing philosoph uh, philosophical questions in that uh, vein that already exist. Uh, so... That particular type of uh, virtual reality, that is quite far divorced from actual reality as we know it today. And, uh, it, you know, it's important to understand that when you're watching these things. But it is a very popular type of virtual reality uh, because it allows for a certain type of storytelling and it's so much simpler to deal with because you don't have to deal with the fact that in the virtual world there are differences that have to be accounted for and it means that you can just write a script for the virtual interactions that matches up with how you would generally expect things to work. Now this is assuming that the virtual world that you're immersing in it just happens to have uh, the same physics and everything of the real world. And when that doesn't, isn't the case, well, then the filmmakers can't use this shortcut and it gets more difficult. And I think in reality, most of the um, virtual worlds that we create are going to fall into that category where it doesn't really match up with the real world. And... And I think that's going to be a simple expediency because we, the whole point of the virtual world is to be useful in some way. Now, for plain old entertainment or adventuring or games and so on, having something that behaves much like the real world is perfectly reasonable and it will work really well. But for just getting shit done, it's not nearly so effective. Uh, so it would make sense that you would be able to, uh, you know, go into your virtual world at your landing point in cyberspace and just teleport to that location you want to look at, uh, which will then be represented to you as something in cyberspace. Now, this type of virtual reality, cyberspace, is used quite a lot in, uh, in fiction, and not just in cinema, and not not the uh, not the visual media. Uh, it uh, it does show up in uh, uh, written uh, works as well. Uh, and this particular uh, cyberspace, it's interesting if you look through the history of television and movies that have portrayed cyberspace to see how it's changed, how the portrayal changes over time as we understand more and more about what's probably possible and as the general public becomes more literate in this type of thing. So it's still uh, an interesting thought experiment though. Uh, if this photorealistic, life-realistic, lifelike virtual reality can really exist. And as it stands right now, there's no reason to think that it's entirely impossible. Uh, after all, uh, our brains do exist uh, separate from the reality they perceive. They only perceive it through senses in that are provided by 
the brain's life support package, which is our body. So uh, it's entirely feasible that at some point we'll work out how to take over the nerve impulses that go to the brain and that we will be able to, in fact, produce this magical virtual reality. Though I don't think it's going to ever be quite as simple as putting on a headset. Um, but it is an interesting thing to speculate about. It makes for potentially interesting stories. Uh, and it, it can make for an interesting uh, setup for a lot of stories as well, where you can tell some, a story that uh, obviously couldn't exist in the real world, but you can put it in a setting where it could exist in a real world without breaking physics. Uh, so that can be interesting, uh, and it, it can... And it can be interesting also if you use it as, say, as the MacGuffin, where, say, people get stuck in the virtual reality and can't get out, uh, such as in the animes Log Horizon and Sword Art Online, now, with two varying uh, effects, or even in the Hack series. Uh, and it's been used at varying levels of uh, effectiveness, and it's not just in uh, these animes, it's, uh, it's also The Matrix, uh, 13th Floor. There's quite a number of these things that do the same stuff. So it's, uh, it's an interesting story mechanic. But you just have to understand that a lot of what's portrayed in these stories is not something that you can possibly fall prey to today. The technology isn't there. We don't have, and even if it were, the technology to do the actual interface, it's very expensive, and we don't have the computing power to actually render something effectively in that kind of manner. Uh, now, if we could perfect the direct brain computer interface, the Rendering requirements might be considerably less because we could use the brain's ability to fill in details because, let's face it, our actual senses are pretty low fidelity. Uh, you know, if you actually look for the, uh, the actual uh, resolution of your vision, it's not nearly as high as you think it is. So, uh, it's, uh, you know... We could potentially, this could make it actually more practical if we can work out an effective brain-computer interface. Though it's, that idea certainly gives me the willies because, uh, you know, quite frankly, I don't want people shoving shit in my brain, right? You know, that's me, right? Uh, you know, you damage that, you damage me. So, of course, that gives me the willies. But, uh the uh, the whole notion, like I, I'm off on a digression here. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a digression that spawned a digression. Uh, these things happen. Anyway, uh, virtual reality, uh, it, it is going to come. Uh, it, it will eventually come. Uh, and we'll probably get to the point where it's pretty photorealistic. Whether we ever actually get to the point where you can get total immersion with a relatively inexpensive device, that's questionable. Uh, I don't, it, it doesn't seem like it should be entirely impossible, but I'm not sure it's entirely practical either. And if we do pull it off, it does have an interesting implication, and that is uh, whether... Uh, the reality that we think of as reality is actually real. Uh, you know, there are some possible ways to test that for certain situations, but there's no possible way to be absolutely certain that our actual reality isn't a virtual reality, that it isn't a simulation of some kind. And if we ever pull off that perfect simulation, that will really make that question uh, an important one. Uh, it's actually something that's addressed in the 13th floor, in fact. So, uh, 
if you haven't seen that that movie, it's actually worth a watch. Uh, it's uh, uh, quite uh, quite interesting. It's a little bit of a horror at, at the same time, but it's definitely uh, an interesting notion a take on the virtual reality thing. Uh, it was released about the same time as The Matrix, so it, and it didn't get as much. Uh, um, press as it probably should have uh, simply because it seemed derivative even though obviously the two had to be in production at the same time. Uh, anyway, uh, virtual reality is an interesting development and I think we will see it continue developing. Uh, whether it becomes that magical uh, uh, thing that takes over the world that's yet to be seen, and a lot of the people working in that area of technology actually understand that, and they wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't take off the way uh, some people think it will. Uh, but uh, I think even if we don't achieve that perfect virtual reality ever, the imperfect virtual realities that we can create even now are certainly useful and they're certainly worth pursuing and probably more so than things like 3d televisions and and that's and holographic projection um, simply because there are obvious real use cases for it that have real benefit it's not clear that uh, things like holographic projection like having displays pop up out of tables and things like that, like you see in current movies, is actually going to be all that useful, all that practical. But actual virtual reality representations of cyberspace, for instance, uh, certainly could be. And I think we'll see more and more developments, at least in that direction. But in the meantime, take what you see in the movies portraying virtual reality and cyberspace with a grain or two of salt, because what they're showing you is not the real state of the art. It's not necessarily completely far-fetched, but it is not the current state of the art. It's not even within shouting distance of the current state of the art. It's usually way more advanced than anything we can do today. And that's perfectly fine. This is fiction. Movies are fiction. So uh, it's perfectly fine for them to... Uh, have something that doesn't actually exist. We as viewers, though, need to watch with some sort of critical eye so that we can understand when we're encountering something just like that. Anyway, that's probably enough of a ramble on virtual reality for now, so I'm going to leave it here. If you want to be notified of future videos, uh, make sure to subscribe and uh, you know enable notifications uh, so that you actually get them. If you liked the video or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Apparently it helps with exposure. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.